Why wouldn't you want to wade into this cool pond on a piping hot summer day? You dip into the refreshing water and enjoy the breeze. Everything's perfect. Until a dark shadow drifts by under the surface. You think it must be a leaf based on its size, so you don't pay it any mind. Until it bites you right on your big toe. After running out of the water, you realize you've been the subject of a giant water bug strike. You've had the unfortunate chance to meet a toe biter, or sometimes called an alligator tick. You'll survive this monster's bite, but it will be unpleasant because giant water bugs are found worldwide in freshwater habitats. Their bites are more common than any of us would like. Be on the lookout next time. Here's what you need to know to spot them. The giant water bug grows to be more than 4 inches long. According to Guinness World Records, that makes it the largest aquatic insect on earth. A nip from one of them is said to be some of the most painful injuries a human can suffer from bugs. Although they can be found around the world, they're especially common in North America. They blend into the landscape. Their dark brown body mimics the leaves of the wetlands. No wonder you didn't spot it. They're predatory by nature, usually after small fish, tadpoles, and other insects. But they've also been known to take down bigger prey like snakes and even turtles. Good thing you're much bigger than a turtle. In some species, female toe biters lay their eggs on the male's back. He then carries them wherever he goes. As sweet as that sounds, the sight of a male toe biter carrying his eggs is unfortunately super unpleasant and will send shivers down your spine. And what's worse, even though they're called water bugs, they can fly. So don't just watch out below because they can come from the sky. As you catch your breath on the shore, something lands on your shoulder. Quick, swat it away. It's a bot fly. Bot flies are vicious tiny insects that lay their eggs in mosquitoes, injecting those eggs into humans. Your warm body temperature creates the perfect incubation environment. When they hatch, they start their lives with a grueling task of eating their way out. Lovely. You're most likely to find them in Central and South America, but it's not implausible for you to have an unlikely encounter with these small creatures in Florida as well. The name hammerhead worm calls to mind nothing good. It sounds like an impossible cross between a shark and an earthworm. Looking at one, that's not far off. Multiple sightings of this strange creature were reported across Georgia. They live up to their name with a distinct crescent moon-shaped head. Well, what appears to be their head, their mouth is halfway down their bodies. Their appearance is off-putting for a reason. These babies are poisonous. They produce tetrodotoxin, the same as pufferfish. Scientists aren't yet sure how it uses the toxin, but the best bet is that it's a tool to catch its prey, other worms. We also don't know how much of it would hurt a human, but experts say to stay away no matter what. Especially don't harm it because it has the spectacular ability to reform itself out of cut sections of its body, like the myth of the hydra. Side note, someone with a great sense of humor nicknamed these grubs lanchovies, which sound much less scary than hammerhead worm. The giant silkworm caterpillar looks as intimidating as it should. Its potent venom is no joke. The larvae are sheathed in tiny spear-like bristles, which release a highly poisonous anticoagulant toxin. So, getting pricked by one of these isn't ideal, but they make it even worse by gathering in bunches. So it's common to accidentally brush up against multiple caterpillars at the same time. Most people who are stung don't feel it. Oh, that's good, right? Well, no. It means they have no idea what's going on when symptoms appear. Plus, there's no visible mark left where they've been stung. One of the strangest things about this caterpillar is that it's super tiny compared to the damage it can cause, usually around 2 inches. They're commonly found in the rainforests of South America, including in Uruguay, Argentina, and Brazil. But plot twist, this creepy crawly doesn't just come in one form. The caterpillar is only in the first stage of its life. Yeah, that's what it looked like as a baby. Once it reaches adulthood, 
it takes on an entirely different shape as the giant silkworm moth. But don't be fooled into thinking it's harmless now because it's lost its vicious spikes. It's still venomous, and now it can fly. You can take comfort in knowing that it only lives for a few weeks in this form, though, because once it metamorphoses, it no longer has a mouth to eat with. The Australian funnel web spider toxin can take out an adult human in about 15 minutes. That's why it's widely considered the world's most dangerous spider. While all funnel web spiders are no darlings, this specific species takes the cake. They're relatively large and aggressive, with rear-facing fangs capable of piercing through your fingernails. The males often wander into human-populated areas in search of mates and are much more likely to cause harm. They make their burrows in cool, sheltered areas, such as under rocks and inside rotting logs. Worst of all, they're commonly found in shrubs and rock groups in suburban districts. If you're not from Australia, you can feel relief since they're exclusively native there. If you are from Australia, pay close attention to your surroundings, and if you see one of these, stay far, far away. A word of good news, an anti-venom was developed in 1981. Still, it's best to steer clear. Down on the bottom of the ocean in tropical areas, you might spot a beautifully patterned shell like this one. They come in all colors and sizes and look like tiny pottery vases made by little underwater potters. If you're like me, your instinct might be to reach out and pick it up and take it home as a souvenir. That's the last thing you ever want to do. This isn't just any old shell. It's the home of a cone snail. If that name doesn't strike fear into your heart yet, it will soon. Like most snails, the cone snail is slow, but it makes up for it with calculated moments of dangerous swiftness. They're predatory, seeking out other snails, fish, and marine worms. They sense potential food nearby using their nose and deploy a sharp needle-like proboscis to spear their prey. The harpoon-like beak is strong enough to penetrate fabric even reinforced diving gloves. If you're a human, and I sure hope you are, you're not the cone snail's ideal meal. That doesn't stop it from stinging people that get too close. If it does sting you, you probably won't feel it because the venom that is injected in that instant is laced with a natural pain reliever. The lack of pain is actually what makes this snail so dangerous. Without knowing what's hit you, you may not register the sting symptoms until it's too late. So, if you see a pretty shell, stay safe by leaving it be. This minuscule bombardier beetle has a unique talent. When threatened, it can shoot boiling hot poisonous acid from its backside. It uses the stinky chemical spray to ward off predators and lash out against other insects. And it works well. Sometimes it even saves their lives after they've been swallowed. Frogs will often spit them back up once they taste their less than pleasant flavor. You might find one in many different ecosystems, from deserts to grasslands to thick forests. They're so versatile that they're found on every continent, except Antarctica. You've probably never noticed one before, because they're so tiny, only about the size of a fingernail. Incredibly, a potent spray can come from such a little bug. It can be because of an elaborate internal structure of chambers and reservoirs that combine two chemical compounds hydroquinone, and hydrogen peroxide. They're stored separately in reservoirs inside the beetle's abdomen. They pass through valves and meet in a central chamber to mix with an enzyme that kickstarts the reaction. Gases created in the reaction rapidly expand and produce massive amounts of heat. Whatever you do, you don't want to get on these little guys' wrong side. You might think that zombies only exist in the movies, but the threat could be much more real if you're a cicada. A fungus called Massospora has a unique goal that few other mushrooms share. It hitches a ride inside the bodies of the singing cicadas, overtaking the bugs' minds and turning them into real-life zombies. Affected cicadas act very unnaturally, with their only goal being to spread more of the fungus to other cicadas. The scariest part is that the insects stay fully functional the entire time, showing no sign that they've been taken over besides their strange behavior until it's too late. While they may not be a threat to humans, there's still something very unsettling about knowing that the buzzing bugs in the trees 
might be the creatures of scary movies. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.